morning, Sunday morning, second to last day of September. Uh, we are on chapter 2.4, still focusing on uh, inequalities. This is the multi-step part that mirrors chapter 1, and we again are going to apply the same rules and techniques that we did in an equation. We just have to remember certain aspects. So we have two things happening to our variable here. We have something multiplying it, and we have something adding and subtracting. In this specific case, we are going to get rid of the addition and subtraction first. That leaves us with 10 is less than negative 5t. We're going to divide both sides by negative 5. Since we are dividing both sides by a negative, we need to remember to flip the inequality sign. This gives us negative 2. The less than becomes greater than t. And now it says graph the solution. We'll draw a number line. We'll show our center. We'll write our border. It is, um, technically, it is a less than sign. So we'll leave open circle and we'll be going to the left. Another problem, something's dividing the variable, something's being added. We will subtract 2 m over 4 is less than 1. We're going to multiply both sides by 4. And we get m is less than 4. Draw our number line. 0, 4. Open circle going less than. I like this. This is a good uh, example for us to take uh, note in. Our variable didn't come first. We still have something being added and something's being divided. We still get rid of addition and subtraction in this example first. K okay, divided by negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 3. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 2. We need to take note that we're multiplying both sides by a negative, so we will flip the inequality sign k is now less than or equal to positive 6. 0, 6. It has an equal sign, so we're going to close that circle. And it is less than. Again, subtraction first. d divided by negative 6 is less than 4. Multiply both sides by negative 6. D is greater than negative 24. 0, negative 24. Open circle. Greater than goes to the right. We have a couple ways that we can solve this. We're going to solve it as if we were a high school student. An advanced high school student, we're going to get rid of the 2 outside because we can't get to the y or the positive 3 yet. Chewbacca's in here. So negative 2 is multiplying this quantity, so we will divide both sides by negative 2. In doing that, there's a couple things. First, this gives us negative 2. We have to be aware, even though we're doing more advanced work, we still have to flip the inequality sign because we divided both sides by a negative. So this becomes greater than y plus 3. Now we subtract. So this is one of those situations where we didn't get rid of the addition and subtraction first. We actually got rid of the multiplication first. Draw my number line. 0, negative 5, open circle, and less than. Again, 
And the reason why I would why I'm not distributing is because dividing by six is conducive with this factor. We notice this one, negative two is conducive is a factor of this number. So that's why we're doing it. If it's not, or if there is a variable and something else is not really conducive to combining like terms, we would just distribute and then do a two-step. So um, there are certain aspects of this that um, warrants me to do this, or at least is productive to me doing it. Um, I don't have to flip the inequality because I divided both sides by a positive 6. And then we will add 2. And 6 is greater than or equal to w. 0, 6, closed circle, and less than. But Mr. Mack, you say greater than. Why did you go less than? Because my variable wasn't first. We understand that when the variable isn't first, uh, this does not read properly. We always want it to be the solutions. Notice it's eating the 6. When I rewrite it, it's still eating the 6. My solutions are less than or equal to 6. This is why it's important for us to listen to these videos. Um, I give you advice, little Easter eggs, um, and other mistakes that students tend to make with these problems. So there's, it's a big advantage when you listen to these videos to the particulars, to the uh, attention to details. So I would advise you to move the variable first. I think that gets you out of trouble. Uh, there are situations that can happen that oftentimes leads us to making mistakes. And now this is a two-step. We're going to get rid of the addition and subtraction first. Well, I already did the math there real quick. Negative 20. That gives me negative 24 is greater than 12n. We're going to divide by 12, divide by 12. Negative 2 is greater than n. If we graph the solution, 0, negative 2, and it's going to be an open circle, and it's going to go less than. We're going to move, oh, no. Uh, here, we are going to simplify both sides first. If we can simplify either side, we have like terms here. So I'm going to simplify. We're just going to rewrite this left side. That becomes 4k minus 1. Now we're going to move variables. And we're going to subtract 4k, subtract 4k, and that leaves us with negative 6 is less than negative 1. That is a true statement. So my answer is all real numbers. And this is where... It really shows why this is the better answer, because it says graph the solution. If we're going to graph the solution, all real numbers looks like this. And I'm going to want to see that. So infinite number of solutions doesn't tell you which what the solutions are. So that's why this is much better. So this is the graph of all real numbers, because it's every single number. How do we graph that? Well, we draw a line above it. That's every single number. Uh, the other thing is that's, remember when I talked to you, some students are moving the constants and end up with 4K is less than 4K. Um, that doesn't make any sense or, uh, or end up with some other crazy sort of weird thing. We have to isolate the variable, move the variables, get all the variables on one side, isolate the variable by itself. So. Uh, we're going to simplify like terms on the same side. 
that gives us 7h plus 6 is greater than or equal to 11 plus 7h. We're going to move the variables first. That says 6 is greater than or equal to 11. That is a false statement. So the answer is going to be no solution. There are There is no solution to this inequality. We don't have to graph it. There's nothing you can graph when it's no solution. Um, what are we going to do? We could distribute or we can divide by 2. Either way is okay. I don't necessarily dislike either. Um, we still have to distribute this 3 at this point. So there will be distribution. We just uh, only have to distribute once. We're going to move the variables. And we get negative 3 is less than negative 5. That's a false statement. So this one is also no solution. And notice how fast I'm doing these. You should be really familiar. That's what, when you sit down to take your assessment, it really should be in very similar manner. You should look at it. You should be familiar with it. You should have a game plan that you know how to attack these problems. It shouldn't be foreign to you. And you should know exactly what to anticipate in how you're going to do it and move through this work quickly and efficiently. We're going to move the variables. Ah, this is a good one. I like this. Is negative 8 greater than negative 8? That is a false statement also. No solution. And so getting these experiences or these examples and seeing, oh, recognize, oh, yes, all right, I see, that's, that's kind of tricky. That's, that's a problem that I should sort of keep in my toolbox. We, again, can divide because they are like terms, or at least they're conducive. One-third D plus 4 is greater than D plus 12. Let's distribute. I don't mind this because... These are going to produce D plus 12 is greater than D plus 12. Very similar problem. Then, whoa, almost did the constant first. And we see that same problem. 12 is not. That is false also. So that's no solution. A lot of no solutions today. This one I'm not going to divide by 2 because that's not really conducive to it. That doesn't really work, so it's not... Uh, let me move this up a little bit. Um, that doesn't really help me. So I'm going to distribute both of these, and that'll just be a little bit easier for me to do the work. 20 plus 5y is greater than 2y plus 14. We have to remember to distribute this 2 to both. I see students that just distribute it to the variable and forget to do it to the constant. We're going to move the variables first. And recognizing when we would divide both sides by that coefficient and when we would distribute is equally as important. So 20 plus 3y is greater than 14. Minus 20, minus 20, 3y is greater than negative 6. Seeing that negative, we don't flip because we divided both sides by a positive 3. And we will graph the solution. 0, negative 2, open circle, greater than. Here I would because this works, and then we would also need to remember and notice that we're dividing both sides by a negative number. So be careful. This becomes 2x minus 6, because the negative 4s cancel. 
8 over negative 4. Oh, I'm, there we go. There's my flipping of the inequality sign. 8 over negative 4 is negative 2 times the quantity 3 minus x. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 2. 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 6 plus 2x. Negative times a negative is positive. I'm going to move the variables. That looks like a 26. It should be 2x minus 2x. And you get negative 6 is greater than or equal to negative 6. That is a true statement. It is equal to it. So it is all real numbers or infinitely many solutions. I like all real numbers. And I'm going to graph it looking like this above the number line. So it'll be interesting to see what they say in the answer key, whether they use infinite many solutions or all real numbers in the area or oh, excuse me, the area of the rectangle is more than 47 square meters. Find the possible values of n. So uh, area is, uh, is equal to length times width, but we have an inequality. So the area of the rectangle is more than 47. So that area, this area needs to be more than, so not more than or equal to, length times width. My length is 3n minus 5. My width is 2. Those m's are not variables. Those m's are units. Um, we, we know that through meters. So we're going to distribute I would not divide by 2 because it's not conducive. I could, but I'm not. 47 is less than. That's 6n minus 10. I'm going to move the constants first. That's 57 is less than 6n. Divide both sides by 6. And we could get 57 6 is greater than n, and that's n would be um, greater than 57 6 meters. Uh, or we could go here and say 57 divided by 6, and we get that 9.5. So we could also say n is greater than 9.5 meters. So that's my answer. Not a bad one. I don't think we have to graph the solutions. Find the possible values of n. n must be greater than 9.5 meters. You must maintain a minimum balance of $50 in your checking account. You currently have a balance of $280. Write and solve an inequality that represents how many $20 bills you can withdraw from the account without going below the minimum balance. All right, um, well, I think it's going to look like this, 50, and uh, your balance, this is your balance, so it's 280 minus 20, um, we'll say B for the number of $20 bills. So I think that would, that has to be greater than 50. Yeah, I think that's my equation, right, and solve an inequality. This represents what it can't be. It has to be more than 50. This, my balance, has to be greater than $50 because it has a minimum balance. So it can be equal to it, but it needs to be greater. And then I'm taking out 20, so I'm minusing a $20 from my, my current balance. And that's why I, B represents the number of $20 bills I'm withdrawing. So we uh, would do this. So if we're going to solve it, minus 280, minus 280, leaves me with negative 230 is less than or equal to negative 20B. And then we're going to divide by negative 20, divide by negative 20. Uh, we need to see that we are dividing both sides by a negative number, so we are going to flip the inequality sign. 
and uh, we'll use a calculator. 230 divided by 20 gives me 11.5. So 11.5, and then we're going to flip the inequality. So B stands for, we'll, do, we'll write it in this way, is 11.5. So I can take out no more than 11 $20 bills. Uh, does it say how many $20 bills? I can take out no more than 11 $20 bills. That's a fun question. That's a good comprehension, right? Um, if I take out 12, that's going to leave me with less than $50 in my bank account. Your bank charges an ATM fee of $2.50, which is charged each time you withdraw $20. Write and solve an inequality that represents how many times you can withdraw $20 from the account without going below the minimum balance in this situation. All right, a little bit more, um, right and solve. So I'm assuming each time, well, so, it, I, okay, you're going to have the same thing. It's going to be 50. Sorry, this has to be greater than 50. So it'll still be $280. And instead of it being 20 times the number of bills, uh, you get, it's going to be 2250 B, because each time you take out a 20, you get this other uh, fee that is associated with that 20. So uh, I would assume it's just going to be this. We'll again subtract 280. That leaves us with negative 230 again is less than or equal to negative 22.5 B. We'll divide by negative 22.5, negative 22.5. This time, 230 divided by 22.5, uh, 10.2 repeating. So 10.2 repeating is greater than or equal to B. So this time, I can't take, uh, I can take out no more than I can take out no more than 10 $20 bills or transactions. I think that's pretty good. Let's check it out. Uh, where's the all real? Yeah, all real numbers. See, <laughs> they use all real numbers. Ooh. Why is there only one all real number? Oh, there's a good uh, 10.2. Oh, that's interesting. They didn't have the repeating sign. I don't like that. And I don't like how they don't have a, uh, a word problem or a word answer. But we're good to go. Um, and that looks nice. Good job. All right. Uh, keep practicing those. Those are really important.